a few good reviews. This is where I just talk briefly about some albums that I've not had the chance to review. There's been a lot out lately that I've had barely anything to say about, so these are going to be very brief opinions on the albums. Not really in-depth. If you want proper in-depth reviews, maybe go somewhere else, but these are just basically my short opinions on them. Considering we're just only just touching March, I'm quite surprised at how many albums have been out already, and yet so many of them haven't really had an impact on me, so it's been a bit of a shame really, but I'm just going to talk about these here, give my short opinions on them, and um, yeah, let me know what you think of these albums as well. Starting with Zaki Ibrahim. Uh, I don't know anything about this artist, don't know where she's from, don't know any of her past material, but I heard this album, and man, it is quite, it is quite beautiful, it's very serene. It is a very, like, neo-soul, neo-psychedelic R&B album that is like, imagine Erica Badu, but, like, transcending beyond Erica Badu and changing the sound so it changes, like everything about the aesthetic and that's not to say that Erica Badu isn't like worth your time she's amazing but I mean like this is like taking that sound one step further The Secret Life of Planets is a very uh, aesthetically pleasing album but the issue with it is that I feel like it's main focus is the aesthetic like I, I think that is the issue with the album like it's too focused on being this like bigger than it actually is type album which I would say that it does nearly reach the levels that she's trying to go for but I just think it ends up suffering in the music department because it, it ends up being the same sort of song every track you're listening to the same sound really throughout the whole album and you sort of lose track of what song you're on each track blends together and you just kind of feel like you're not really listening to an album you're more listening to like something that wants to be bigger than an album, which is kind of weird, but I think that's what I get from this album, really. It's an experience that you should try. Um, it's a very cool album, very um, beautiful, as I said. Um, Love Made Naked is amazing, by the way. This is incredibly catchy. It could be one of the best songs of the year. I, I think it could be, but... Um, you know, if every track sounded like this, I think I'd have loved the album. It would have been like an album of the year contender, but it just kind of falls short of doing unique things on every track. You know what I mean? It's one of those tracks that just blends together. Each track sounds too similar, but it's very good. I'd, I'd say I'd say go for it. Go for it if you like R&B and Neo Soul. I'm going to talk about the Wombats, man. The Wombats. Oh, these guys, right? I used to love these guys when I was younger. I mean, even now, some of their songs are still amazing. But when I was younger, me and my friends just used to play all their songs, like, together. It was such, like, a, a teenage band. Like, their lyrics fits your emotions so well sometimes, like. And the, the thing about them was that they had so much personality. Like, they weren't just an indie band, like, the Pigeon Detectives or OK Go that just made catchy music. They had really good lyrics. They were clever. They were witty. They were hilarious. Like, there was so much to go. There was so much going for them in the lyrical department, and the songs were incredibly catchy as well. The way they wrote songs was incredibly unique, especially songs like School Uniforms, um, you know, Let's Dance to Joy Division, which is a pretty funny track. Killer Director as well, Moving to New York, which is still amazing. Techno Fan, which is pretty ironic in its lyrics as well. It's a clever song, so many clever ideas that they had. But just imagine all of that being stripped away, and then there's just, like, nothing left. That's this album. That's literally this album. They've took away all the things that made them so unique and so much fun, and uh, they are just a plain indie band now. Like, nothing is there to redeem them, honestly. This is so boring. <laughs> like, it's such a bland album. Like, even even the catchiness is gone. Like, there are no hooks on this album. You can't listen to this album and be like, oh yeah, this track has a really good chorus, because none of them do. None of them do. And yet, the thing that made them so special was the lyrics. And yet, even the lyrics on this are so bland as well. Like, I don't know what's happened to them. I guess bands can grow up, right? And change their sound. That's fine. But don't take away everything that made you good in the first place. Like, that's not maturing or that's not progressing. That's regressing. You know, you're taking away what made you so good in the first place. You've took away all the lyrics, all the fun, and now you're just any indie band you could be anyone this isn't wombats this is just a british indie band that you couldn't even pick out of a lineup it's such a shame man 
it's such a shame. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend this album. It's pretty boring. Go back to their older stuff, though. I'd recommend that, definitely. Turnstile are a post-hardcore band. You know what? This album's all right. But it's one of those albums that, like, does everything right. Like, this, the, the style they're doing is fine. Like, they're not, they've not botched it. They've not made it generic. It's just, it's just kind of what you expect. Like, there's nothing that makes them stand out. It's just a good post-hardcore album um, in a time where there are so many other bands that do this style anyway. So when you kind of hear it, um, no matter who does it, you're kind of just left to be like, okay, I've heard this a hundred times before. Turnstile isn't adding anything to the table. Um, you know, bands like Touche Mori, I think, add some uniqueness to the table in that, with their lyrics. But, you know, Turnstile don't really do anything special or anything innovative. So if you like post-hardcore, maybe try it, but I feel like you're just going to come out of it and think it's just okay, because really, it, that's all it is. Evidence is an indie rapper, and whether or not is like his uh, fourth or fifth album, I think. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say about this, man. Like, look, the, 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 the core foundation of making an album should always be music first, okay? Like, you should focus on how to make a good song, how to craft a good song. If you've got lyrics, if you've got good song ideas and good song topics, and if you're introspective and you're wordy, that actually doesn't mean anything if you can't back it with a good song. Indie rap fans really get on my nerves because they will defend this, they will attack mainstream rap for being redundant and lazy and generic and um, like bad lyrics, but yet they'll defend this and yet there isn't a single song on here that sounds good Like these are all so generic like there's no Accessibility um, the beats are so standard for a hip-hop album. He is a dull rapper. He doesn't bring any sort of Personality he just flows with his same monotonous tone throughout Like I just don't understand how people are defending this. This is such a standard boring album that has nothing going for it. I don't care if the lyrics are amazing and introspective and he speaks about things that are so politically relevant and oh it, 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 it. ASAP Rock is also very lyrical. Open My Eagle is also very lyrical, introspective and political. Elzai is all of those things, but what those guys do, they make good songs. They make actually listenable songs. They don't just make boring beats and no choruses throughout the whole thing and it's just rapping continuous rapping with no end game really yeah indie rap fans you're gonna have to explain this one to me because you guys are confusing you you think that lyrics are everything but it's not at all um I, hey if you like this that's fine but i, I just don't get it Finally, Nipsey Hussle did want to do a full review of this, but this is one of those albums that the more I listened to it, the less I had to say, because each track brings a really good West Coast flair. He has some bangers on here. There's a great track with Kendrick Lamar, which I love, and there are so many other tracks across the album as well. Generally, though, the ones with features I noticed were better. Um, I think Nipsey Hussle does work better with other rappers involved, like that YG song, which was so great back in like 2016, which uh, <clears throat> really kind of like put him on the map a little bit because YG is so big anyway. And uh, Nipsey Hussle, again, does that West Coast sound well, but I don't know, man. I just feel like... This album goes on too long, he, there's not enough variation, um, Nipsey Hussle as a rapper isn't the greatest, but he does have like this energy and this personality that I like a lot. I just feel like it needs to be honed in and crafted in a way that makes him stand out. Because at the minute it's just like great West Coast tracks, but they're just kind of like good West Coast tracks that work in small doses because for the whole album you kind of notice that each track uh, like each track, the further you go on, basically, the more you kind of get a bit bored. And I don't know why, maybe it's just me. If you're a, a huge fan of West Coast rap, then I think you'll like this, as well as that S-O-B-R-B-E album. Uh, but for me, I just feel like I need something, there needs to be something in there that changes it up a little bit, that gives it something completely uh, unique. Because I don't think it is, but Nipsey Hussle is a cool guy. I feel like he's got some good... Um, lyrics at times and he's got a like great charisma so there's something there but I just don't know what's missing I can't work it out 
And that's it. I um, hope you enjoyed these reviews. Let me know your thoughts on all these albums if you've heard any of them. Listen to the ones that you haven't heard though because uh, you might enjoy them, especially that Zach Ibrahim album. I haven't seen anyone review it or talk about it, so I feel like that could, um, you know, be a, be one of those albums that goes under the radar, but when people discover it, they absolutely love. It won't be for me, but I think it could be for a lot of people. So yeah, um, that's it. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews, interviews, podcasts, track reactions, uh, lists, and album reviews every day. Uh, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, have a good day.